the Wednesday Night War between NXT and AEW. So, uh, we got some things that happen on uh, NXT. We got a special announcement by D Generation X on NXT. We have a very cringeworthy, uh, you know, it's a TikTok video. It's not TikTok, you know, Skype of the Undisputed Era. Don't do that again. And uh, I it was Zoom or something. Yeah. Zoom. There we go. Yeah. And then also we got Cody co- confronting Jake Roberts in a very anticlimactic way. And then uh, <clears throat> we have also a, a lot of uh, you know a lot of other things getting ready for double or nothing. And Chris Jericho takes on Pineapple Pete. So let's start off with NXT. So NXT starts off with the NXT Tag Team Championship matchup: Imperium, Fabian Eichner, and Martel Bart Marcel Bartel. Taking on Matt Riddle and Timothy Thatcher, so you can already tell at the beginning of the match that, that Thatcher is kind of like done with Riddle. He don't give him the fist bump at the beginning. The, the flip flops hit him, and he's like, "Ugh." So during the I match, like Thatcher was done with this before he was even in it. You're right. So well, Pete Dunne still stuck over there. So uh, uh, Matt Riddle, uh, the, the, the match is what you expect between uh, these two. Like I said, I am really getting into Imperium now. Like you have been in Imperium already. But now, like, cause I I knew Walter, I knew Alexander Wolf, but I was never a big fan of Alexander Wolf. But uh, but Fabian Eichner and, and, and Marcel Bartel, yeah, Bartel yeah. those guys are good. Yes, they are. Yeah, very good. Matt Riddle hits a monkey flip on uh Fabian Eichner, and then he crashes into t- uh, Timothy Thatcher, and he falls to the floor, and he says, "You know what? I'm done with this." And then he walks off, leaving Matt Riddle by himself, and then uh. Matt, uh, <clears throat> Matt Riddle gets the Powerbomb European Uppercut combination and then that's where he loses the Tag Team Championships. So, Imperium is the new Tag Team Champions. Backstage... Oh, yes. Yeah, ba- uh, I think that was good, too, because right, I was like, you don't know how long Pete Dunne will be out, so Matt Riddle doesn't need to hold him anymore. Uh, there is a, there's a brawl backstage between Thatcher and Riddle, and Riddle calls Regal. He wants a match for later on tonight with uh, Timothy Thatcher. Uh, Tegan Knox taking on Indy Hartwell, and she beat her with the Shiniest Wizard, the worst name for the finisher. Because look, I told you before, if you gonna call that joint the Shiniest Wizard, that better be the shiniest motherfucker was I ever seen in my life. When Kyrie Zane called it the Insane Elbow, I never seen an elbow like that before. Yeah, cause it's insane. It's insane, but no, her shine. I'm like. No nah, man, you don't even you you don't hold the, the lay back like Kenny Dykstra. No, you don't do nothing special. You just do a very below average. I know thirty seven people that could do a shiny a shiny wizard bread and she can. Yeah, I mean Hurricane to this day can still do a better shiny wizard. Than she exactly, can. exactly. Uh, so it, that was going. Rhea Ripley says that she uh is going to get the NXT Women's Championship back. From Charlotte, even if she has to go through Io Shirai to do it. All right, so that's going to set, set up that encounter, probably at In Your House, we should say. Uh, so we got the uh, Cruiserweight Championship tournament match from Group A of Jake Atlas taking on Tony Nice. So uh, the, the match was okay. The match was pretty good. He, uh, Jake Atlas wins with a, a rainbow DT, which sends Tony Nice into zero and three. He's out. Yep, he's out. So he is out. Uh, Undisputed Era does a Zoom call, uh, uh, which decided Rob Charles should fight Dexter Loomis. I didn't like this video call at all. You, you know what? Yeah, no. do, do you know what it was trying to be to me? The bubbly bunch. Yes, thank you. Uh, oh, so yeah. I, I was yeah. like, "This is th- they, they're trying to do the inner circle shit," and I'm like, "No, they do it way better than you do it." I'm sorry, and uh, y'all were trying it, but I was like, "No." So I said, "You know." I think it would be better if it wasn't through a Zoom call. Though. If it was like them, like, like recording different things and then putting it together, then it would probably be more entertaining. Than exactly. Just, uh, exactly. Like if, if they was because because. The Bubbly Bunch, <clears throat> they use a mixture of recording at their house and a Zoom call. Uh-huh. And I'm like, y'all just did this, and I was like, this was, this was just uh, cringeworthy. 
Uh, we get a video package, a very awesome video package for Karrion Cross uh, and Scarlet. The end. Uh, it was pretty, it was really good. Uh, then we get a video uh, package uh, talk about Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez and said they're going to hurt a lot of people because they're both outcasts and how the whole story came up. So I was like, okay, so you try to put them over. Why they're not here? And then we have a special announcement uh, from D Generation X. So Triple H, Shawn Michaels, and the Road Dog announced that the next NXT TakeOver which will be on June 7th, my birthday month, will be NXT TakeOver, wait for it, In Your House. Uh-huh. Yep, and in I your mean, house. since, fuck it, since we are in the house, I mean, it's, it's about, like, it took y'all this long to do this? So. I, I like the logo, too. The, I mean, all thing would have made it better for me if the NXT logos wasn't orange, I mean, wasn't yellow, but I can't complain about that small little fact. Yeah, but no, and they got the classic WWE logo up there. Yeah, no, I, I'm all for NXT uh, take over in your house. Yep. So now th- th- this is the match Prime been waiting for: Cameron Grimes taking on Finn Balor. Crickets. <laughs> so, uh, h- how did you feel about the match before I go on with it? The ending sucked. The, uh, man. So, uh, Finn Balor was trying to go for the coup de grace, and then all of a sudden, Damian, Pri- Damian Priest with the nightstick comes out and hits Finn Balor in the leg, and then he gets the cave by Cameron. I don't like the cave finishing move. I don't like it either because he don't never do it right, especially to this one. He kicked him like he was like standing on top of his shoulders, and Finn Balor sold it. Made Finn Balor look stupid. Yeah, and I was just, and you know what? Because honestly, you know. The only person that I've seen really get that double foot stomp thing down past probably Alex the Black, because Kofi don't get it all the way neither. But the one, the way Kofi <laughs> does it makes it look more devastating to me. Is is I mean, yeah, Kofi's not clean, but you can clearly see him pushing his feet down that person's shoulders and chest. Yeah. I, I mean, it makes it look more botchy to where it looked like he actually kicked him in the throat. Which yeah, I don't know. I feel like I like it's sometimes I don't like the moves to be as clean as possible. Sometimes yeah. I like the little dirty look on them. So okay, you right. Cameron yeah. Grimes one just look dirty to one point where it's just un- just <laughs> I don't like it. He said it took, it made me want to take a take a shower. Ugh, it just looks look so dirty. Yeah, like him and uh Sammy Guevara don't don't I don't like the way they do it. Yeah. Uh so a- a- after that, uh Priest comes in there and then uh, you know, does the old Triple H sit- sitting on the throat with the chair to the Undertaker from WrestleMania uh the Raw for WrestleMania X seven. And then he I said, didn't like he, I didn't like how he had to over explain it though. Because he noticed it. Damian Priest to me is like the Matrix. He has to explain every single detail why he's like, just do it. Yeah, he was like, I have fun attacking you again, just like I did three weeks ago. We, uh, I was the one that attacked you three weeks ago. I was like, okay, we didn't need the over explanation, I felt like. Well, so this is probably going to be an in your house matchup since we can't get Finn Balor versus Walter. It, which sucks. Which, yeah, Daniel Priest got to take a loss, I guess. Again. And I'm just like, man, he just lost to Keith Lee, so now you got to lose this one. Fine. So now we're at Group B because backstage, uh, Swerve said, you know, what I need is his confidence, and then I'll be fine, and I can win this tournament. You know what I'm saying? He, he started getting a little cocky because, you know, what, what house we in? Swerve's house. So... We have uh, Jack Gallagher versus Isaiah. Wait, was Swerve the one that was talking trash about uh, Tony Nese? Like, he ain't won nothing. Was he the one talking trash or was somebody else? I don't know, but if he was, it would make sense of why Tony Nese attacked him okay, at the beginning. Okay, well, yeah. Uh-huh. Follow Swerve, Yeah, so Tony Nese attacked uh, Scott Dorn in the entrance. So, obviously, we're going into a storyline with Tony Nese and uh, Swerve Scott because uh, after injuring him, Gallagher won with a rolling elbow strike. And... Uh, so now, which sucks, but I could, they probably got another storyline for him. Isaiah's out. <laughs> All right. Because he's one and three. So. Yeah, he's one and three. He's out. Yeah. Uh, Caden Carter takes on Aaliyah. Uh, 
why did it, this match even need time? It, did, it didn't need no time at all. And then Robert Stone was out there. This was a t- attempt for Aaliyah to try to join the Robert Stone brand. Look, am I getting more into Aaliyah? Not really. But I'm just saying, I get what, what they're trying to do. But it was just unsuccessful. So obviously her trying to get into the Robert Stone brand is going to be a storyline that they're going to keep trying to exploit. But I don't know how it's going to work. She should just go back to Vanessa Bourne. I don't, I, I don't know. I think Vanessa Bourne kind of taking time off for Corona. Yeah, good point too. Uh, Johnny Gorgano and Candice LeRae is back with another segment of the Gorganos. Let me ask you this because we didn't talk about this. How do you feel about the Gorgano segments? It's uh, interesting. <laughs> it's very weird to me. I gotta, I gotta, I guess I gotta watch more of it to see how I would enjoy it. Okay. I gotta watch more. Peep this. I, I, it's a good idea, but they. Here's the thing: when they are snapping, and uh-huh. it goes to black and white. First of all, I don't like that disorient look. That that's just my personal opinion. I don't like okay. the look where it, it clearly looks like you know the frames can't catch up with each other. Cause and that's what it looks like, you know, when when they're talking. I don't mind the black and white, but here, here here's the problem: they do it way too much. Okay. And, way too much. Yeah, it's a, like if they had the segment of the Gorganos and they they just they're just talking, having regular dinner, talking about how beautiful they are and you know how successful they are, and then all of a sudden, like if they want to do one time during this, the segment and they doom and it snaps and it goes to the black and white, and they, they, they do the promo, and then when they do the black and white, it's too long. Gorgano cut a whole promo in the black and white. I'm like, can we get back to the? It, it, the, the point of the segment, the point of the Gorganos is, in their minds, they're fine. They've been this way ever since. But it's, it's they're trying to sell us on a split personality. But if it's going to be split, they're supposed to split and come out of it. Gorgano, it went to black and white to the point where I was like, yo, we still talking in black and white? When he was talking about um, Keith Lee? And I was just like, first of all, where did that even come from? But, you know, because he beat Diamond Dr. Kofi last week. He said, like, I don't like Keith Lee. He said, <laughs> and then Candice LeRae, she's snapping over me and him. I'm like, yo, please don't exploit me and him and Keith Lee relationship like this. Because I can see where this is kind of going. Oh, you know where this is going. You know where this is going to uh, intergender tag matches. Yeah, and I'm just like, oh, no, I don't know how. I, I, I mean, I just don't know. But I think if they just did dinner with the Gorganos and then they just snapped, or even at the end after they was, was like, done talking, and you look into the camera, and it's both they both go to black and white, and you get some ominous music over it, that would sell it more than them just going into the camera snapping and doing these long-ass promos about why they hate this person. Like, Gorgano talked for about a good minute and a half in black and white. That's too long. That's way too long. So, I, you know, I like the idea of it. I want them to, you know, chop it up to the point. It's like this. You know what? Hey, uh, as he's talking over dinner and, they, you know, look what I did to Donald Dr. Cover, whatever his name is. And you know what else I have a problem with? I don't like Keith Lee. And it, you know how it just goes to black and white and he just snaps back out of it and everybody be like why it will make people want it more instead of just like you said uh damian priest explains everything you don't have to explain everything when you snap it you know what i'm saying you don't have to yeah not you just be subtle and leave it to a mister or leave it to be clever but they don't they don't i was like i was like okay this is getting because i i can see this get going dead real fast and once again, I've said this time and time again. I'll say it again. Candace LeRae is one sexy woman in regular clothes. <laughs> she, when she put her wrestler gear, I'm just like, ugh. I, 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 she, had one of, she had one of tight eye lights. It was like an all green. Yeah. I forgot. I think she fought Shayna. Uh, I was like, the only attire I liked. It was like an all green attire. Yeah. I don't like green. I'm like, okay, okay. It's like. 
when Candice LeRae gets dressed up for a regular day, I'm like, that is one sexy woman right there. But then it's like when she put a wrestling gear on, it's like a little kid going out on their bike and they got the knee pads, elbow pads, and the helmet. And how <laughs> kind of stupid they look. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what it looks like to me. I'm just saying. So, uh, but it, uh, neither here nor next week. We got K- Koshida versus Drake Maverick. We know Drake Maverick was in that one. Akira Tozawa versus uh, the Phantasma. And Io Shirai versus Rhea Ripley. So, I thought this was going to say that for In Your House. Obviously not. So, they're not doing this. So, I mean, they might end the disqualification or something uh, anyway. Matt Riddle taking on Timothy Thatcher is the main event for NXT. And then, uh, like I said, Timothy Thatcher is really good at what he does. And so is Matt Riddle. Uh, Riddle reverses submission into the pin. For the win, and Thatcher is pissed. Attack him, put him in the F- Fujiwa armbar, and just stare at the camera as it goes off. So that was NXT uh, this past week. Now we got to move on to AEW Dynamite. Dynamite. Yes, as we're getting ready for Double or Nothing, which is on Saturday, May twenty third. Depending on what my pay looks like, or depending, Lord willing, you know, we see that day. I think I may treat myself to that. Yeah, uh, I might. It depends. Uh, I like the car, but if they add something else or something, I'll be like very intrigued. I'm already intrigued, but yeah, uh, if I have like another good match, I'll be like, I'll be like, okay, I got to I got to get exactly. It. So we start the show with the Murderhawk monster Lance Archer comes to the ring with Jake Roberts, and he says he was asked for an apology last week about his antics against Brandy Rose, and he says as soon as she kisses my ass, I'll give her an apology. <laughs> Anytime you come into this ring, it's no man's land. And then, you know, he got to, you know, the the, the, the chauvinistic Jake Roberts way. Do I'm concerned. A woman is great at home cooking, wiping the baby's butts. And a, 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 a go the heat right here where I like. Occasionally, when it gets cold outside, she can keep me warm. Hot <laughs> damn. You a son of a bitch. <laughs> That, that's classic here for you but then all of a sudden you hear the, this revving of a car and then you, you, you look over in the stadium area it's Cody and he's in this car he's revving it up and then uh, he's uh, Cody got his, his 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 fist taped up and peeped it so he got his Ford he got his Ford F-150 and then he comes down about Maybe fifteen feet, it crashes. I mean, or, or he could have went. A, it's another way you can go. He could have went another way and still really, got in that arena, but we're not gonna even get there. No, yeah. no, no. We probably have to. And then he kind of crashes into the uh the, the, this one little barricade, and then comes out the car. So a, a, as he coming out the car, Archer ran for the ring to meet Cody, and then they started fighting. Uh, doing close shots. He's trying to get to Roberts, but Roberts is having a struggle getting out the ring. So Archer and Cody are uh, brawling. Cody's on the apron. He gets tripped up by Archer and then uh, thrown him to the bad case, smack him to the table. And then, you know, Jake Roberts is on the phone, on the microphone. Welcome to our world. You're inside here. You're free me. I'm like, <laughs> it was going off on the microphone. Cody fights back. Ar- uh, dodge a choke slam, and then uh, that's when Archer sweeps to Cody's legs, and then um, but he takes Archer's braid and starts choking him to get in the ring. And before uh, he gets to Roberts, he gets booted. Uh, Archer boots Cody, and then he went. Uh, Cody went to Archer again. Roberts grabbed Archer by his shoulder, tell him to leave, not now. This, in my personal opinion was terrible. Yeah, Cody thought it was, like, ever since he did it, they've been using it in all the commercials so far. Just the truck uh, knocking over the barricade. But here's the thing, Prime. You got this car revving up, right? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like this. It's like I'm revving it up, and I'm driving from the length of the back of my driveway to the front of my driveway. Basically, th- 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 that's how far I went. You, I revved it up. You could at least show him driving the distance of 
Because it's a, it's a, you can drive a long ways out there in the parking lot or even exactly. in the space. In the fan space. You can drive a long way. They could have showed him coming from uh, a, a ways away or something. He could have been... They could have... This is a... They have done crazy stuff before. They could have shot this as you see Cody driving. Like, I'll tell you, like he's coming in, like speeding in. He goes to the parking lot and then he speeds all the way down and crashes into the thing. Not start right there. Like, okay, l- 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 why is my car right here in the first place? Let me get in it, rev it up to go literally about 15 feet to get right back out of it. I could walk that space. Yeah, they could have. They yeah, I don't know. And well, then, he, I mean, and if they t- wanted it to look cooler, they could have showed him riding you know, on a motorcycle so he could actually get in the space and not just have to stop yeah. and look awkward. Well, no, 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 no. Cody gets enough with his edges already. They would get my motorcycle. No, I'm not doing it. Not, n- not doing it. I'm surprised it. the pyro ain't go off when he came in with the truck. <laughs> From the, I'm surprised they go off behind him. So here's the, and then on top of that, the beatdown sucked because I'm like, if any man literally just you know plops his, you know just sits on my wife and puts a snake on her, I'm doing anything I can to get him. Yeah, no weapons. He ain't use no weapons. Enough. He didn't do nothing. Like, like, Cody tried to go out to have a wrestling match with Lance. I'm like, what? What? No. Yeah, I don't think this could be a regular match, but I guess they're going to do it anyway. But... Well, they're going to have Tyson bring, you know, uh, they sign him. He's AEW bound. He's, he's well, going to put I, the title. I mean, I would have known that. They best, they're like best friends. Him and the uh, Pecans. Oh, yeah. They're good friends, so. So. That's that's how you have it. I thought this opening segment sucked all the ass out the room. So yeah. uh, a video package about the, the, the uh, tag team championships and uh, and then how they uh, the, the, excuse me tag teams and how they stepped up since Nick Jackson's injury. How I, I, it's amazing how all these tag teams stepped up because one partner from a tag team was down. Okay, but it's the best one, so I get it. Jurassic <laughs> Express, Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus. Coming out with little kid Marco Stunt takes on the best friends. Don't like him. Chuck Taylor, Trent, uh, and Orange Cassidy it was the first match of the night. Mm-hmm. So uh, we uh, the, the match is pretty good, but that's not the highlight. Because first, Orange Cassidy comes out there with his uh, COVID nineteen mask, and then he takes it off, and then he looks like he wants to get involved in the matchup uh, to distract uh, Jungle Boy Luchasaurus. Out of nowhere, somebody pushes back forward too, and Luke Kane come out of nowhere, and he kick. Ray Phoenix comes out of nowhere and literally fly kicks the shit out of uh Orange yep. Cassidy. Mm-hmm. I ain't never seen nothing like it in wrestling, and I kept trying to show my wife right, and I was just like, "Look!" And she, and, you know, her reaction time was like, "Uh," and I'm like. Show it again. They never showed the replay of Orange. First of all, I'm surprised Orange Cassidy's glasses stayed on. <laughs> they always stay on, man. That's uh, the gimmick. I know, man. That's like Johnny Cage right there, man. Look, his head snapped away from his body. I was just like, how clean was the- I? You know what? I'll be mad if somebody kicked me like that. I, I would <laughs> that's be. That's like when um. That's like when Ray, uh. When Orange Cassidy was fighting uh, Park and he did Ray Fence did his unnecessary six one nine into the ropes yeah. to kick uh yeah Trent. yeah exactly so <laughs> then uh uh he throws Jungle Boy to, Jungle Boy gets distracted Chuck Taylor spikes Jungle Boy with the awful waffle oh I hate Chuck Taylor bro <laughs> I don't like the best friends hey, I love the awful waffle though oh though the move is good I don't like the name. But the movie. No, well, it was the Omega Driver. But you uh, know, he was like, "I'm gonna start taking myself seriously. I'm be the, the awful waffle." Yeah. <laughs> it gets the three count. Warlord appears and just literally, you thought the kick was bad. He just grabs Marco Stunt and launches this man into the. St- I'm like, I'd be feeling bad for Marco Stunt. And Marco is gonna be like the Enzo that one year where he got knocked out every episode. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you, you was actually looking like, I want to see how he gets his ass kicked today. Yes. yes. That, he got knocked out every episode. It was hilarious. Yeah, so him and Lucha Stores uh, have a stare down. They were teasing this match months ago, so we may get at double or nothing. Lucha Stores versus Warlord. So, Maybe. Uh, they might add it. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I don't know. 
don't need to see the backstage stuff. Uh, we got a fatal four way. We got Super Bad Penelope Ford with Super Bad Kip Sabian versus the uh, Chris Statlander. Got it right, right? Yep, Chris Statlander. Uh, yeah, the, the, the galaxy's greatest alien. Chris Statlander. Mm-hmm. So, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Mm-hmm. And Hakura Shida. Oh, my gosh. Hakaru. Hakaru. She, damn it. I almost had it. Hakaru Shida. Okay. So, this Fatal 4-Way was good but sloppy. Yeah. It yeah. was very sloppy at points. And I was just like, Penelope Ford is a very athletic woman. And uh, so, there was a time Kip Sabian was on the apron and she he was holding Chris Stadler. She, she was about to go and hit her. Chris Stadler gets out the way. And then, um, no, no, her car, she gets out the way. And then uh, she goes and starts making out with uh, Kip Sabian. So then she gets put on, uh, Chris Stadler puts her on her shoulders. She goes for a poison runner. This thing almost bent this lady in half because she's so athletic. She does the, the, the backflip, but Chris Stadler flips late and flips too close. And it's like she falls on her back. I'm just like, that was just a nasty-ass botch. It really was. Yeah. Uh, they, they timing and stuff is still off. I don't know what it is. With the, it's just their timing. It they is. They just can't seem to get the timing right, or the people who face each other can't seem to get it. Well, get their styles to jail. It, you know, I think is I don't think the women have had enough chance, even on AEW Dark. I don't think the women have had enough chance to develop a chemistry. Yeah, like it, if their chemistry was good, because I've seen them wrestle separately. Like I've seen Akaru Shida wrestle, I've seen Penelope wrestle, I've seen all of them wrestle separately, and they're all great. But then when they come together, their styles just don't gel. They don't have that chemistry at, at all. It it it, it just. It just doesn't work sometimes, and that's why the women division is uh, suffering at the moment. But on the outside, yeah. uh, Britt Baker is giving uh, Statlander the um, the lockjaw, and then in the ring, uh, Sheeta pits W four with a running knee strike. So uh, it's going to be Nyla Rose taking on Hakara Sheeta for the championship at Double or Nothing. Okay. So yeah. Uh, and then, so, uh, also, you know, just to fast forward, she, uh, not, not, Nala Rose is in the backstage. She says, all right, congratulations to Chris Taylor later, but I got something, I got something for you before the match. And clops her right over the head with a kendo stick. So now the match is going to be a no disqualification match at double or nothing. I'm sure. Cause, uh, her gimmick is that she has a kendo stick and she lost her kendo stick. So, yeah. So there it is. Uh, now we have uh, the Inner Circle, uh, Tantana and Ortiz, taking on Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy in a tag team matchup. This matchup, in my opinion, went too long. In, in okay. my opinion, I was like, this match did not need to be 20 minutes long. And we did not need to see five fucking back rakes, which I keep hearing JR talk about. So I hate that move. However, JR, Excalibur, and Tony Schiavone were a little loose tonight. And I actually liked them tonight. They were funny. All right. That, wow, you not you just ain't gonna put nothing over her. Huh? <laughs> just, just right. you just not gonna put them over at all. So hey, uh, as, as the match goes on, uh, Santana and Ortiz is looking for a sweet sweeper, but then Omega count, counter tags in Hardy. Sammy Guevara comes down, limping from taking their full on golf cart bump <laughs> the week before. <laughs> And it's yeah. funny because he's coming down limp. Brace. He got the neck the neck brace on and everything. He gets right into the ring, trying with the steel chair. Matt Hardy hits him uh <laughs> with the twist of fate on the chair. Sammy Guevara has got to be one of the best sellers in the business right now. Mm-hmm. Sold yeah. the hell. Neck first of that twist of fate. Never seen nothing like it. Yeah, uh, and, and uh they still don't call it twist of fate. I don't know why. No, they, oh, because you know what? Because Jeff used to WWE right now. Yeah, but if Matt Hardy has the uh, thing to it, they can still say it. I mean, I don't know if he does or not. I really don't. He 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 oh. does. Oh, he does. Okay, well, I don't know yeah, why. They, like, it's confirmed that he does. I don't know if they. I don't yeah. know if they want to try to call it something different. But every time he does the twist of fate, they just say, "Oh, what oh. a move." 
Well, then, uh, Kenya hits the V trigger, then Matt Hardy hits the Twist of Fate, and then on OTs, and then that, that's the, that's it for them for the, to win the matchup. Taz is backstage with Darby Allen, t- telling him to pop them hips, and uh, Darby Allen's like, I don't need your advice, man. So, uh, I mean, they really didn't say that, but that's basically what it was. He apologized for the interview last week, but uh, uh, Darby was also Cody, and Darby didn't get it, and he said uh, he I, he could help him. He says, no, Taz, you don't get it. Back in the day, I played third in the state of Ohio in amateur wrestling, and then he just walked off. I'm just like, okay. So, MJF is next going up against Lee Johnson because he had that career-threatening hangnail. So, now he hits the salt, the uh, salt of the earth, and then, uh, of course, basically, Lee Johnson tap out. It's just this another jobber guy. And then um, he said next week he, he signed him up for a uh, tune-up match against Marco Stunt. So, this should be interesting. So, now... So, he can bully him again. You damn skippy. So, now it's time for the co-main event. Pineapple Pete taking on the La Champion, Chris Jericho, come, coming in by the inner circle. So, Pineapple Pete said, look, I've been wrestling... For 16 years under the name Suge D. And Chris Jericho comes out of nowhere, so I call him Pineapple Pete. Nobody didn't know who he was. <laughs> and he says, and out of nowhere, Chris Jericho started calling me Pineapple Pete. Well, ever since that happened, my life has been great. And then he got the music in the background and starts drinking out the pineapple. So he comes in. Sounds like a. <laughs> it sounds like a. Um, oh my God. What do they call it? I don't know if you watch The Mad Singer. That's what it sounds like when they be uh, giving oh, clues of who they are. Yeah. That's what it looks So he comes out. He does the same annoying ass. And I, that roll from one side of the ring to the other. I'm just like, God. <coughs> uh, no, what you going to do that, dude? The, uh, Tyler Bate? Say what? Don't Tyler Bate do that, no, Tyler no. Bate is, uh... Trent Seven does that, but Trent Seven rolls into the ring slowly. He just okay, rolls okay. in and then rolls to about the middle and gets up. He don't roll from one side to the other. <laughs> He's excited to just roll slow. This baby just rolled throughout the whole ring. Uh, Jer- the Jericho comes out with a pineapple peach shirt. And then uh, here, go, here go JR. We can see a gigantic upset here. Uh, he slapped sure, Pete. If Peek is fired up, throws him in the corner, gives him an uppercut, throws him in the other corner, gives him an uppercut. Jericho says, okay, had enough of that. Judas Effect, and that's the match. Pineapple Pete is done. So yep. he grabs the microphone and uh, joins in the circles in the ring, and he says, now that the threat of Pineapple Pete has been vanquished. <laughs> Yo, I was dying. I was dying, because Jericho is my, is my motherfucker, bro. He is the shit. Yeah. Yeah, Jericho is, is hilarious. He said, let's move on to the matter at hand. He says, inner circle versus elite. So, obviously, we couldn't have our war games match up because of, you know, the, the, the pandemic. But we're going to find a way to have this kind of matchup. So, he says, if that's even uh, the elite thing anymore. I mean, I haven't seen have their guys in like two months. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, Jericho! He, he played the shit. First of all, where is Adam Page? He's home. Like oh uh, oh, so he he don't want he he's one of the people that don't want to be part of the pandemic, right? No, he's. I think he's just home. Like just is he home. From, oh, was it, is he from America? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm saying only, I'm saying he's home as in like he's just staying home to be safe until he actually has to actually wrestle. I gotcha. Like. I gotcha. Yeah. So he said, "Next circle's writing history, and then they're going to create a stadium stampede match. Wait until you see what this dastardly D, the inner circle, can commit to the elite in the middle of a football stadium. So lick your wounds. The inner circle is challenging the elite at double nothing to the first ever stadium stampede match. In the meantime, we'll wait here for your response, said Jericho. Then we get the buzzing noise. It's Vanguard one." Vanguard one tells Jericho that they accept, and then uh, Jericho speaks to Vanguard one. Says, "You thought anyone, you thought any more to our invitation to join in the circle?" He says, "That's all right because we got a message here for you, uh, Floyd, from Floyd, the baseball bat." 
And the message is this. And they beat the shit out of Vanguard 1 and beat him to pieces. No. They killed Vanguard 1. No. Rest in peace. The RIP to Vanguard 1. They, 2016 to 2020. Short life, Vanguard 1 is gone. And I'm pretty then, sure they're going to have like Vanguard upgrade or Vanguard 2.0. 2. Yeah, 2.0 or 2.5 or something. Yeah. Matt Hardy comes from the bank, and then he, he is like, no! Nah! You know, he has Vanguard 1, the broken piece of his hands. So that's the drone. And now it's time for the main event. But, the, uh, real, real uh, quick, though. Yeah. Uh, this stadium match going to be crazy. I already know it is. Bro, it's going to, it's an empty, uh, fuck an empty arena. It's an empty stadium matchup. Where they, they probably go set up the two rings in the cage, probably so. I don't know, but like, I I just I, I know that stadium inside and out, and like they have two pools in the stadium. Ooh. So somebody might be going off the one of the pools or off the diving board or something. Sammy Lamar, he 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 take them bumps. <laughs> I don't know. So they got they got two pools. So somebody's gonna go off the pool. I'm assuming. They have different areas. Like it's a lot of, who it's a lot of stuff that they can get into. Right. So they got the Joker looking stairs that somebody might fall down. Who knows? Who you know? So here's the thing: who's part of the elite? So it's Cody, Kenny, Adam, and the Young Bucks, right? Yes, but uh, I think Cody is going to be replaced because he has a match. So Cody is going to be replaced by Hangman. I mean by uh Hardy. Okay, so who's replacing Hangman? Heyman, I'm pretty sure Heyman's gonna show up. Okay, and is Nick gonna come back? I think so. <laughs> like we gotta wait till this week's episode of <laughs> Damn. Um, BT to see if they uh they they accept it. So yeah, but I'm saying like I don't want to see like QT Marshall in the match. Oh, or Dustin. Yeah. you know I I I, mean, I, I mean, fuck that main event. Fuck it. <laughs> fuck that. Um, main what event. I'm saying, if it's like if it's Matt, Nick, Kenny, Hangman, and Hardy, then then yeah. Uh huh. But if it's not, then they they in trouble. <laughs> so, uh, the Fallen Angel Christopher Daniels, uh, accompanied by Scorpio side Frankie Kazarian, is taking mm-hmm. on the Exalted One Brody Lee and the other ten members of the Dark Order because the Dark Order sucks <laughs> all the time. I love that shit, man. So, <clears throat> uh, Daniels are being cautious, moving around for Brody Lee stuff like that. Uh, these two and uh, I had. Uh, pretty sure I had a pretty decent matchup because you know Christopher Daniels is 50 years old or 50 plus years old I think he's on like actually 50 oh okay uh Daniels went for the uh, second Angels wings were broke but Brody blocked it and then Daniels avoided Brody and hit the BME and Brody kicked out after a two count so uh, then here go Jerry Ross I think Daniels wrestled his best match and he got the AEW do you agree? <laughs> uh, does Steve the Mail count? No, let me stop. No, we not doing that. <laughs> uh, Daniels jumps off the top rope with Brody Counter with the power bomb and followed up with a discus Larry for the victory. Afterwards, his minions come to celebrate with uh with the the championship. John Moxley has seen enough. He storms down to the ring, <clears throat> and uh, Brody and and ten, <laughs> they get they got the numbers now. 10, run away with the belt and Moxley beats the hell out of one of the minions. So, yeah, pretty much. Uh, that's, we'll see. Yeah. Hopefully they do something crazy this week to get everybody hyped up for that match. Yeah, because I'm, I'm like, okay. Uh, he says, I do not su- uh, suffer disrespect. I will not suffer fools. Mr. Brody Lee, you have made a very foolish decision. One you will pay for dearly with interest. You're going to find out that on May 23rd, double nothing, proclaimed John Moxley. So that's the way AEW ended. Who won for the week of your opinion? NXT or AEW? <clears throat> I mean, I, don't, I, I probably would have to say NXT. I'm, I'm not sure. Like, that Cody segment kind of brought the towel for me a it, lot. It, bruh, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna tell you right now. NXT won for me this week. N- NXT okay. won for me this week because I like, I like the tag team matchup, like the brawl, like the main event at the end. I uh, enjoyed. <clears throat> You know that Swerve Scott has a you know storyline. 
I like, like I said, I like the, the Gorganos, but th- there's some things that need to be changes in that stuff. And then we got the we got the announcement about in your house, so that's cool. AEW, on the other hand, like I said, the main event was cool, but you know I don't like the Dark Order. Pineapple Pete and, and Chris Jericho is what I was waiting for, but it was just a squash match, so you know that was whatever. And then they uh, everything to me kept feeling like filler. The tag team match went way too long with Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy. It doesn't need to be. The Fatal Four Way was good but sloppy, and that whole. Cody and Lance Archer Jake Robert Stane did not hit the mark like it should have. So that that's my personal opinion of it. And you guys can post that in the comments your your, your per, my per, uh your personal opinions about it as well. Uh how you guys felt about it, uh who won. And then now we gotta move on to our last thing for the podcast. 